What's up guys? This is the next Let's Build for the JavaScript series I'm doing. These are gonna be basically quick tips on things you can build in terms of components, as opposed to something I did on my other series with like Ruby on Rails where we're creating entire apps. This is more focused on the component side and just things, realistic things you need to do with JavaScript these days uh, for websites or mobile stuff in general. And the focus here is to use vanilla JavaScript. I don't want to reach for jQuery or any library to do some of these things because we really don't need to these days. Uh, modern browser, browser support will um, let us do these things without having to worry about falling back to certain things, which was why jQuery was so great when it did come out. You could do things in like IE6 and get away with it. So what we're gonna build today is a sticky nav and it's gonna just be focused on this main navigation bar, uh, the idea is when we get to the, about this far down the page, we want to have that fixate and then just scroll with us as opposed to just staying at the very top, which is kind of a, a nice UX pattern in terms of making that menu always available, but it does uh, fill up some of the screen when a user scrolls. So that's something to take into account. So to do this, I'll go back to uh, my actual code pen tab, which I'll, I'll share this with you guys. I have some basic markup already. Um, it's stuff I invented out of thin air, so it's nothing. I'm, I'm no, not using any type of framework or style sheet or anything um, other than sourcing Unsplash for this background image. Um, other than that, I've just kind of applied some styles to make it look at least a, appear nicer than just a default nasty looking HTML document. So uh, we do have some classes we'll be referencing in some of the HTML. So things to pay attention to are the primary nav class, the header class, and this main class, which is wrapping everything. So what we'll need to do is add, essentially add a class when, a, when we listen for a scroll event. And when that happens, we wanna add a, like a class called say fixed, which I'll end up using in this example, which is gonna end up fixating the primary nav with position fixed. Uh, we'll get into more of the kind of quirks with doing that. It's usually going to mean that that element is just kind of separated from the DOM elements and just kind of thrown to the top. Um, but you'll see what I mean when that happens. But essentially, once that class is added, you see it's called fixed here. We can target the primary nav and position it fixed and set all the properties we want in terms of CSS. So to do this, you essentially do need CSS plus JavaScript. You can write all of this CSS with JavaScript, but I find it's just a lot easier to go and reach for actual classes with these things as opposed to author each thing with JavaScript. So we'll try to keep it clean in that approach going forward. So the first thing we need to do is get some variables going for our actual content that we're gonna target. And I'm using JS with the Babel preloaded, so I can use const and let and all those variable instances. So I'm going to use const a lot in this one. So I'll just start by doing const nav, we'll call it nav, and then we'll do a query selector. And we're going to search for that primary nav class. So you can do it just like you would in jQuery if you're coming from there. So you can actually target it by that class with that dot notation. And then on top of that, we need to find this actual top to this nav itself. Um, so the top of the window to that nav, we need to know that distance to apply this fixed class because we don't want to apply it immediately because that wouldn't make sense. That menu would jump up to here and we wouldn't ha be having a good day pretty much. So to do that, we can take that nav instance or variable, so I'll call this top to nav and set an offset top to it. So it basically that function is built into JavaScript and it finds the t how far from the top of the window a element might be. So that's kind of a nice thing that comes bundled. Uh, on top of that, we need to find our main class, which is our main wrapper. And I could use the body class here. You could use anything that kind of just, you can scope. It makes more sense to do that as opposed to adding like a class directly to the nav menu, because I find you might want to target more things at once with CSS as opposed to just the one when you do apply that fixed class. So keep that in mind. So 
we'll just call that main and we'll do query selector and same thing here so dot main okay so now we have what we need to target everything in the dom and the main thing we'll end up doing is listening for a scroll event so i'm going to type window add event listener and we'll listen for scroll there's tons of events that the browser can listen for or javascript can listen for so if you're ever not sure you can look those up in the docs um, mdn has some great docs denoting everything there so definitely check that out if you need to find out which ones you can support we're going to end up using a function called sticky nav that i'll create up here but essentially the window is going to listen for when we scroll and then just fire this function each time so let's go and create that function so we'll start with function to start and then call it not stinky but sticky nav and close that out okay so in here is going to be the logic and what we want to do is an if else statement so we'll start by denoting that so if and make this look nice else okay so what are we going to check so we need to find the position of the scroll y uh, so the scroll Y is top and down. So we're, we're checking if the windows position, so you can hook into JavaScript that way too. And we, since we denoted what the nav offset is here, we can actually compare those. So we can do greater than or equal to top two nav. So essentially that's saying if the scroll position is greater than top to nav, let's do something here. So what we're going to do there is essentially apply that fixed class. So we're going to target main dot class list dot add fixed. So class list is basically targeting all the classes on that element. So it goes and finds the element, which we've already done here. We've got that in memory and then we can find the class list on that element and then we can add fixed. So on top of that, we need to, you know, figure out the case of if the person isn't actually scoped to scrolling to this positioning. So see, I've already, I've added that class already and it's working, but you notice when I scroll back up, it's still stuck at the top, which isn't what we want. So to do that, we can just actually remove that class once that positioning is gone. So we can just say remove fixed. So you're essentially toggling it. So now if we do this, you'll notice it just removes itself as we scroll, which is great. So one caveat to this is some padding issue on the main. You see there's a little jump when I apply that fixed class to the content and it kind of messes with the content. So what we can do there is either, I've added it in our CSS as a comment. You can add basic padding to fix that, which is fine. Uh, but I found that to get the exact height of this header, which you might change later on down the line, you can use JavaScript too. So to do that, we can go and grab the main again. And I'm gonna just do a style. So you can add style properties in line with JavaScript this way. So I'm gonna do padding top, which needs to be camel case with JavaScript. And then we can make that padding top amount equal to the nav dot offset height. So it's essentially saying what's the height of the nav. And then we can append that with a pixel declaration. So that essentially it's going to apply inline styles that have an offset of that padding. So let's see it in action. So you see it here. So the, the actual nav is 68 pixels now, which is nice. So rather than actually fire that with your own CSS, you can do it dynamically, which is basically the, the perk of JavaScript in general. So when we wanna scroll away from that boundary though, we wanna remove that padding just like we did that fixed class. So we'll do style.padding top 
equals zero in this case. So now we'll remove it each time. So now it's a lot smoother, you noticed. Cool stuff. So going one step further, I have this higher link in our actual DOM. Um, it's not split displayed by default. In fact, it's hidden by default. So what you can do with JavaScript here is maybe as it scrolls, I want that to actually show. So maybe it's a call to action as someone's navigating the site or some other kind of call to action. So what we can do, I have this class on the LI called hire me over here. We can either target that with a new const variable or just target it directly and do it this way up to you. Usually if you're going to find yourself using a element more than once, I would definitely put it in memory uh, by declaring a variable for it. Otherwise it's just going to be kind of soupy once you get into using it a lot throughout your code and it's a lot cleaner to use variables too. So I'll do the other way. Uh, so we'll do query selector and we'll just find that hire me. And then again, we'll declare some style properties. So display block, or excuse me, display equals block. So essentially we're just hiding and showing it. And this is the same thing as jQueries dot hide or dot show. This is all that's doing. So we'll do the same here instead. Document query selector. So this is a perfect use case for using a variable. I'm just showing you basically what not to do. It's not that you can't do it this way. It's just more performant and easier to read to declare this as a variable up here. Uh, so take that with a grain of salt. So we're going to do style display none here. Cool. So with that, we can maybe go into our full view. Let's see if it updated over here. And this should fixate once we hit the top. And you see the call to action display over here. We've got some styles for hover states and everything too. And there is some transition properties on the CSS so that fades in uh, nicely. So that's just something else that's very nice to add. You can do the fade in thing with JavaScript, but I find the CSS just wins in that department in terms of fading something in. I would reach for CSS in that case, as opposed to something like jQuery, what would all automatically have that fade in functionality, which worked, but it was also something you couldn't really extend that well, other than the speed or something. So this is kind of just a quick tip to create something that fixates on scroll. So hopefully that helped you guys. I find this to be really useful and all you need is just a little bit of JavaScript to make it all happen and just some CSS to make it really fluid too. So again, this is JavaScript in the vanilla approach. So definitely see the power here. Uh, a lot of these functionalities and or a lot of these functions that we have available to us just really make this super easy. So JavaScript is our best friend in this scenario. If you like this, please like or subscribe. I'm going to continue this series probably until I run out of ideas. So if you have ideas or things you want to see that aren't too crazy, in terms of building I, like a full scale apps and stuff in JavaScript, I, I want to do that. Time is the ultimate factor. So eventually I, I'm looking at a lot of Vue.js stuff um, that I'm going to get into, I think. So I'm leaning towards that framework if I do anything. But other than that, I think a lot of it's going to be focused on doing things with vanilla JS and practical examples because there's so much out there that just is rudimentary and basic programming, you know, reading a manual kind of approaches. So anyway, I'll quit rambling. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.